Jets Broncos fan. I miss yeah. the Bears days. Why, you see, we're 13 <laughs> seasons in the NFL, and you were the first player, Brandon Marshall, in NFL history to have 1,000 yards receiving in a season for four different, or yeah, for four different teams. That means you had success no matter who was throwing you the ball, wherever you were, that was all you. So we welcome uh, you as an athlete and also the creator of I Am Athlete, which is not a podcast. It is a media empire. How are you? I'm great. Um, yeah, that, that was special being able to play on a few different teams, having 17 plus quarterbacks and having success. It's similar to your your broadcasting career, your media career. No matter where you go, what network you're on, you're going to be special and you're going to have a lot of success. So congratulations to you on joining the FanDuel team. Thanks, B Marsh. And how I does it we, feel? How does that feel? It feels good to be doing look- something by myself, right? To have like the leeway to say, okay, I'll take a little bit of a risk and I'm going to do what I want to do. And FanDuel is really supportive of that. And I'm really grateful for the real estate, you know? You did it all network? you. Can we curse on y'all network? I don't know. Can we? Let's ask the control room. They're saying no. It's on cable, so I don't think so. Okay, all right. But if you do, right, I won't be I mad asked. at you, ever. All right, let's get to this right now. Everybody's talking about the play of the game, and what a story, right? Jalen Watson picks six. There's nothing to say about this. It was beautiful. The bigger story is what happened with tight end Gerald Everett, okay? Herbert targeted him there on that interception. The play before, he asked to come out of the game. He's clearly gassed, B. Marsh. How much of what right. happened is on Everett? on Everett, right? Like, this is what conditioning is for. I've been in this position before where you get down to the red zone, you're you're tired, you're exhausted. Something else has to kick in for you to stay on the field and get the job done. When it's red zone and it's third down, your top guys need to find a way to stay on the field. And if you're tired and you're on the field in these critical moments, you you gotta do your job. In, In this instance, he did not do his job, why? Because when you run routes like this, where you can have a, a, a an option to keep going or sit down, you have to be decisive. The quarterback is reading you. We work on this every single day in pre in pre practice, right? Shallow crosses. If you're looking, you're booking. If you're not looking, that means you're stopping. So the quarterback is expecting you to be a certain place, and he's right. going to throw the ball. This is 100% on the tight end. I, I see what you're saying. I, so I had a thought, and I want to know your thought on this. And I was going to ask you, if is it on the coaching staff? Should the coaching staff have taken him out? Because that's something that I'm seeing a lot on Twitter. But also, I guess the question is, does a veteran quarterback make this decision and throw to Everett when he's clearly not 100%? Or does he recognize that because of experience as a player? Uh, or and does he look somewhere else in his read, right? Does he go to the other side of the field? Yeah. Like, I'm not putting it on Justin Herbert, but we all forget that this is a young QB. He's still growing. He's still developing. Does a Tom Brady, you know, make that sort of situation happen? So let me tell you what Tom Brady, my guys like Jay Cutler, I had a little cup of tea with Eli Manning, Russell Wilson, (laughs) some of those guys. But those type of quarterbacks, even Tom Brady, like you mentioned, you know what Tom Brady's going to say? Hey, Gronk, get your butt back in the game. He's not going to let your, he's not going to let his tight end, his star tight end, leave the field on a third down situation or red zone. So in those moments, I'm telling you, you, if you're on the field, you have to do your job. So I've been in that situation before where I'm tired, but the reason why you stay on the field because that's where you make your money, okay? Third down, we got to win third down. We have to we have to have red zone efficiency through the roof if we want to be competitive in the league. So this is 100% on Everett, but I understand. I've made this mistake before, but he just has to learn from it and get better. And then you have Herbert himself who's out there. It's not like he's mailing it in at the end of this game, right? They're down 10. He's out. The coaching staff isn't pulling. Warrior, totally. And the injury is a huge story here. We're looking for updates. But he gutted it out. He clearly had something going on with his rib. What did you make of his performance? And what does that do in the locker room? Listen, Herbert is the, he's the real deal. But I was going to crush Herbert until I saw that he was dealing with something, whether it's chest, ribs, whatever the situation is. Um, I was going to crush him because now he's sitting here at what, 17 and 19 or, or 16 and 18 overall record through the mm-hmm. first three years, two and a half, two and a quarter uh, 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 of, his, of his career. Like that's not good enough, but we want to crush some of these other quarterbacks that come in and have success and win. At the end of the day, it's about winning and that's it. And Herbert, special talent, but then you got to make sure you get that W at the end of the day. But for him to go out there and gut it out, 
throw that touchdown. I was like, you know what? Let me let me ease off of that. Let me ease off of that point. Maybe week five, week six, I'm having that discussion. Hopefully not, because I think they have everything they need to be a contender this year. Uh, should the Chargers have pulled him out? I mean, they're down ten. He's getting hit by Frank Clark. He's got George Karloftis all over him. Like, what? What should? What should the coaching staff have done? I was saying, get him out of the game. Yeah, I was saying the same thing when I saw. I was like, you know what? Um, you know, it's a long season because, I mean, w- warming up, you can see his face. You can see how painful. Yeah it was for him and how much pain he was in. So I was like, you know what? You protect your quarterback there. He's the type of guy. He doesn't talk. He doesn't talk to you. He doesn't talk to me. He doesn't talk to the media. He doesn't talk to half his damn teammates. This is a dude that's just going to go out there and be where he's supposed to be, no matter what the situation is. So I respect him for that. But when you have a a, a special talent like that, you have to protect him. I think Chiefs fans are probably real pissed at me because I'm not even talking about them. And Mahomes looked good again. And it's no Tyree kill, no problem, right? The depth in this Chiefs receiving core makes them really scary. And they're shining. He hit nine different guys again. Eight guys had two or more catches. Is it better for him to have that one go-to star or have the depth? Is this sustainable for the Chiefs? It is sustainable for the Chiefs. But look, let's not get it twisted, Kay. Like, you, you, you want guys that can you know, do some legendary things in big moments. That's Tyreek Tyree Hill, okay? What you want is to have those stars like the Tyree Kills of the world uh, that can fit within your offense. I had to learn that early mm. in my career. Back when I was young, the first four years, I wanted the ball every single play. And then as I got older and I matured, I realized that the, we would be more efficient as an offense if Alshon Jeffrey got the ball, if Martellus got the ball, if Matt Forte got his 20 cut t- touches, because now they can't just single me out and double me, right? So it's actually better for the star receiver when the other guys are getting involved. I go back to my Denver days with Eddie Roy. Eddie Roy had 91 catches. I had 104 catches. He had Brandon Stokely and Tony Scheffler yeah. that had 50 catches. And then you go to the Jets. My, my boy, Eric Decker, Eric Decker had 90 catches, uh, 12 touchdowns, a legendary year. And I had a, a all-pro year. So you want to spread the wealth. And it's working for them. And they're really scary in that AFC right now. They're looking good. And credit to Spags for getting this defense to make plays, especially down the stretch Spags. in the fourth quarter. Short week. I know they were at home. But for them to have even just the power to do what they did, they always, Spags always has coaches them up right at the moment. At least he does uh, out there in Kansas City. All right, yes, let's talk does. about I Am Athlete. Because there is so much going on. I feel like I can't even keep track of it all. You have like 90 Instagram handles. You're booking so many stars. (laughs) I saw the Michael Strahan episode. Uh, You say it's not a podcast. You say it's a movement. Can you tell me the goal of your movement? It's you. You're doing it. I mean, you left the, you know, linear television. Well, I mean, you're still on linear television. But what FanDuel is doing is disruptive, right? FanDuel is leading away in this space, right? Like it's the premier destination when it comes to sports betting and sports content. You chose to leave where you're at and come to FanDuel. That is new media. You are new media. We're doing things our way. Look how you're dressed. Look at your set. We don't see that, you know, (laughs) on on traditional uh, television, right? Like we're the ones that are able to get these guys. So this movement is exactly what you're doing. It's what I'm doing. It's Pat McAfee. Like this is new media. Pat, you and Pat, I mean, I I love. Don't stop yeah. saying stop stop and stop me too. saying All of us, me one and family. Pat. Thank you. Love okay, it. thank you. Uh, okay, well, I just <laughs> right. love you know players come and they talk to you and it's very uh, you were this. Here's how I'm going to say this: the first time I ever heard an NFL player talking about mental health, it was you. You and, and I'm obviously a Bears fan, and it just caught me. You know, just I followed your career. You're you know, a prolific wide receiver, one of my favorites. I don't think there's anybody like you in the in the league on the right now on the field. But off of it, you really trailblazed in that way. Can you sort of assess for me the progress that's been made specifically in the NFL in that area? Are you impressed? Do you think that there's a ways to go when it comes to how the league and teams support their players in that way? Listen, there's always work to be done, right? For sure. But I'm super impressed and super proud of the NFL, the league office, for the work that they're doing. Tracy Perlman Mm -hmm. in the league office, she calls me almost every other week with different opportunities or even just bringing me into the discussion. Brandon, what do you think about this? Are we looking at this the right way? How do we activate some of these partnerships? How do we get our teams to do more? I mean, when I did, when I came out uh, in 2011, August 4th, 2011, I told the world you know, what I was experiencing, what I've gone through, and what I want to do moving forward. Um, you know, I was the only one. Now you look up, 
not only in football, but in all sports, you have the Dak Prescotts, the Naomi Osaka's, the Simone Biles, the Kevin Loves of the world standing mm -hmm. up saying, listen, this is what I deal with, and this is important. Now, Kate, what we have to do is get our guys to respond and not react. Like Calvin Ridley, I feel something. I can't play. I can't practice. You have uh, Naomi and Simone. Well, this is what's going on with me. I need time. Yes, there is a time and place for that, but also if we – have the proper things in place, we can probably work through these things. So we need to look at the athletes and sports as a microcosm to what we could be doing in other places, right? Like be proactive, take care of your mental health. It's important. It's the most important thing that you have. It's something you talked about. And I really think your authenticity always at a podium, after your career, during your career, you've always kept it real. And I think that's why players relate to you, even players that are like just coming into the game right now. And they're sitting down with you on I Am Athlete. And I just think it's really, really, really cool. And I loved your training camp tour. And my favorite was you and Joe Burrow, which was amazing. <laughs> Tell me what he's made of as a man, a leader. What did you learn? You know what? It's, it's almost as if he's um, like he's not made up of much. And this is not a bad thing because he's super bright. Uh, he's a loving guy. But it's just like, it's like still, like nothing rattles this kid. Like he's so amazing and he's so calm, cool, collected. He's so humble. He's just like one way all the time, whether it's good, whether it's bad. That was my biggest takeaway, right? Like yeah. some guys walk in the room and they, the, the room may change them. He walks in the room and the room changes to whatever he's putting out. Joe Burrow and all those guys at that table really impressed me because they're superstars year one, year two. They find a way in the Super Bowl. They're playing, uh, uh, you know, lights out football but they still have this brotherhood. They still have this love and they still have this sense of humility, which a, guy, a lot of guys lose when they get to this level and in, in, in just in their careers. So I was really impressed with Joe. Joe. Joe is going to be, you know, he's going to be a Hall of Famer. Damn, I, I said that. What is this year three for him? Yeah. I'm calling him a Hall of Famer. He started with an he's injury. That, he's, he's, yeah. He's that guy. Took his team to the Super Bowl. Got to take his team to the win column here in week two. Now, he does have Jamar Chase, who I think you met when you were out there, too. They have perfect chemistry, right? That carries over from college. A lot of these stud wide receivers moved this offseason. Which wide receiver do you think landed in the best situation? Obviously, A.J. Brown, Devontae, Tyreek. Who's, who's going to end up on top? A.J. Brown. Yeah. Oh, hey. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Fly, Eagles, fly. Did you see him in week one? When yes. did he go, what, 10, 10 catches, 155 yards, Crazy. I think it was? Crazy. I mean, you know, the last time we saw something like that was when Terrell Owens was in his prime, right? Like, think about, like, just how he looked. He had his freaking dark visor on, muscles popping out. And not only the mu muscles <laughs> popping out, but he had, like, oil coming down his body. Well, it was a night game. I mean, he was breaking tackles. He looked, yeah. Legendary. He... He is in the best position. Yeah. I love A.J. Brown. And right now I got Justin Jefferson, number one. I got A.J. Brown, Whoa! number two. And then I put Devontae Adams still there out of respect. But right now, Justin Jefferson is the best wide receiver in the league. And then Cooper number Cup. two is A.J. Brown, but it's close. Cooper Cup Cooper Twitter. Cup is top Cooper five. Cup Twitter is right here. Maybe, what, what, what? Top what? <laughs> <laughs> top what? Justin Jefferson's what? I love what? Cooper Cup. Justin Jefferson's one. Cooper Cup. Here, here's the deal with Cooper Cup, Go right? On. Like, um, Right now, he's top five. He's top five. Okay, cool. I, sure. Tell me what the thing is about Cooper like, Cup, Brandon. <laughs> well, so the guys, this is what the guys feel, right? Like, system, right? Like, first of all, he runs routes, you know, you know that no one else can run. He's consistent. His football IQ is through the roof, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, he's getting a lot of targets, and they're moving them all around. So a lot of guys, what they're saying out there, what they are saying, not me, this is just, just the you guys. know, my ear to the street. What the guys are saying is, look, I want to see wide receivers go to one side and it's mono y mono. Can you beat me play after play after play? That's what they want to see, right? And Stephon yeah. Diggs, you get that out of Stephon Diggs. You get that out of, you know, the Allens of the world, the Keenan Allens of the world. You get that out of Tyreek Hills of the world. So that's the debate around Cooper Cup. Can he do that if he just lines up two yards outside the numbers yeah. and go mono y mono with the best of the best? And where does he stack up? I'm not going to question you because you, you know, I don't think there's a wide receiver like you in the game. Not I, me. I, I know, I know. But Why I'm are you questioning question me? You question about, the oh, other the guys, guys. The guys in the streets. The, the guys. guys that you got. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> uh, but I was thinking about who compares to you, and it's sort of impossible to do the body size, the speed, the toughness. Right. There's no you in today's game. You're very unique, right? So is there anyone in the league 
who does sort of mirror your game? Because to me, you're like, if Mike Evans, A.J. Brown, and Mike Williams had a baby, that would be you. Wow. You took the words out of my mouth. Really? That's really good. That's really good. Yes, um, it's A.J. Brown and Mike Evans put them together. Yeah, A.J. Brown yeah, and but Mike I'm not Evans. As, I'm not, I'm not, I wasn't as explosive as A.J. Brown. You guys but, watch him. But oh toughness, he was so good. I, I'm telling you, the Eagle, I, I, that's the best addition. But I can't believe you have Devontae uh, Adams at three. All right, quickly, last one for you. I'm going to ask you, let me try to see. Oh, I want to ask you about you and Alshon's, while we're, while we're just getting these hot takes out of you that'll be all over Twitter. You and Alshon <laughs> had this special season. I mean, you mentioned Eddie Royal, which I just love when you were out in Denver. But uh, 2013, 1,400 yards for Alshon. You had a smidge under 1,300 and 12 touchdowns. To me, as a Bears fan, it was iconic. They pulled out a win in week yeah. one somehow. But is there a duo that you think is the best today? We know who you think the best wide receiver is. Is there a duo you like? Yeah, I still like Adam Thielen and Justin yeah, Jefferson. That's it. Uh, phenomenal there. Um, get, help me out here. Who else do we have out there? I love. I think Cincinnati. They're at receiver. Well, court. Godwin's hurt. I love so. the makeup of the. Yep. What about Godwin's Julio hurt, and Evans? So Tampa. Yeah, but I wouldn't put them at number one right now. Like, um, I and then also one to look out for. What? Gay Davis and Stephon Diggs. Yeah, we yeah. know who Stephon Diggs is. Gay Davis. Did you? Yeah, I know you watched him, but yeah. I, this is like my favorite thing to say right now on TV right now. Did you watch Gabe Davis <laughs> opening night? <laughs> They're number that. one. They, Buffalo, he had that. They're number one. Yeah, he had that last year. It's it sort of carried over from last year, Gabe Davis emerging. And they had, you know, Josh Allen just on another level. They might win the Super Bowl. I'd be happy to see it. I love it. Do you think so? Ooh. You got them in the Super Bowl? Hey, Chicago, not, no, everybody does. I don't know. I, I forgot. I don't even know if I picked a Super Bowl. Quickly, we talked Bears. They got the Packers Sunday night. Big game. You know that rivalry well. I'm not going to ask you about X's and O's. D you know, I'm from there. Do you have yeah. faith in the Chicago Bears organization to turn the fortunes of their team? No, I do not. I do not. I'm sorry. Um, I, I love the city of Chicago. Um, it was one of my favorite experiences. It's the best sports town in the whole wide world, right? Like, I had to fight, you know, uh, the city of Chicago so I can pay for my own meals. They took care of me. They still showed me a lot of love. Mm. Um, awesome there. But management, it's not in a good place. And that's, it's just not. It's not. It's the Chicago Bears. This is the Chicago Bears. Mm -hmm. How have we been sitting here at the bottom of the NFL for this long? Shouldn't happen at all, at all. This is a premier team, right? This is the Chicago Bears. They should not be this bad for this long at all. I know. They're looking. They're a very angry fan base. They're looking for something to hold on to. They won over the in sloppy conditions over Trey Lance and the Niners, and it was as if they had won a Super Bowl. They were so excited about it. They're, those fans, I feel for them. They're looking for something to hold on to. Brandon Marshall, you are the absolute best. Takes on takes, as always. I am Athlete Podcast. Who's on next? Oh, we have Mikey coming out Monday. You know, okay. we, we went to that level. You know, talk a little bit of uh, name, image, likeness. Mikey, you know, little Mikey the basketball I'm guy. I'm sorry, are you joking? No, I'm being serious. He's coming on. How? What? Mikey's coming on. Yeah, we got Mikey coming out Monday. Conrad, what'd you say? <laughs> He's a hooper from Southern California, as he's telling me in my ear. Thanks, Conrad. Okay, Brandon Marshall, we appreciate you. We'll be back it's with more Thursday season. Night Football. Love you. You're the best. I'm so happy for your success. You, He's the best. All right. <laughs>